Liebe Kirchentagsbesucherinnen und Kirchentagsbesucher, liebe Menschen am Rande, die dazukommen, ich heiße Sie sehr, sehr herzlich willkommen zu der Veranstaltung, die dem Kirchentag noch mehr Öffentlichkeit eingebracht hat, als er sonst schon hat. Und das ist auch gut so, weil es ein wichtiges Thema ist. Das Gespräch mit der Bundeskanzlerin Angela Merkel und dem 44. Präsidenten der Vereinigten Staaten, Barack Obama. Über das Engagement, über das Engagement für die Demokratie und die Verantwortung zu Hause und in der Welt. Wir, der Ratsvorsitzende der Evangelischen Kirche Deutschland, Heinrich Bedford-Strom, und ich, Christina Austerau, Kirchentagspräsidentin, okay. werden uns in einem ersten Teil der Veranstaltung mit den beiden Gästen unterhalten. In einem zweiten Teil werden vier Jugendliche kommen und ihre Fragen stellen, denn es ist ihre Zukunft, um die es hier geht. Applaus Frau Bundeskanzlerin Merkel. Sie sind nicht zum ersten Mal auf dem Kirchentag. Aber ist dies hier jetzt auch für Sie eine besondere Veranstaltung? Ich glaube erst einmal, dass der Kirchentag dieses Jahr sowieso eine besondere Veranstaltung ist, weil wir nicht immer 500 Jahre Reformation feiern können. Und deshalb ist das eine ganz besondere Erinnerung an Martin Luther, der uns in die Geschichte zurückführt. Und es ist die Geschichte zu der Zeit von Martin Luthers Leben war ja auch Kolumbus in Amerika. Und damals haben die guten Beziehungen mit Amerika begonnen. Und dass der frühere amerikanische Präsident heute bei uns ist, ist natürlich die zweite Besonderheit. In den USA redet man die amerikanischen Präsidenten auch dann mit Herr Präsident an, wenn sie nicht mehr im Amt sind. Also sage ich jetzt, Herr Präsident, ich begrüße Sie herzlich auch von meiner Seite aus hier bei uns in Deutschland, hier in Berlin. Sie haben Berlin ja schon mehrere Male besucht. Jetzt ist es, glaube ich, der erste Besuch im Ruhestand. Wie ist es? In Berlin zu sein, for so retired, many so to say, how is it for you to be here with so many people at the German Kirchentag? Well, first of all, guten Tag. It's uh, good to see all of you. It's good to be back in Berlin. I, uh, I have to say, first of all, that uh, not only do I love this city, but uh, one of my favorite partners throughout my presidency Uh, is sitting next to me today. Uh, Chancellor Merkel has done outstanding work, not just here in Germany, but around the world. Uh, I am deeply honored to have been invited to participate in uh, this wonderful event, uh, in part because my own public life began working with churches in poor communities in Chicago. And I think that for those of us who are interested in creating a better world, it requires a sense of purpose and a sense of faith, uh, a, a belief that uh, we can change things for the better, that we can treat people with kindness and tolerance, that we can bridge the differences uh, that exist between nations and between religions, and that we are unified by Uh, a, a benevolent God. And that's what's driven me throughout my work and throughout my life. And as has already been mentioned, uh, part of what I'm most encouraged about is to see so many young people here today. Because... <laughs> at, at a time when uh, the world is a very complicated place, Uh, when we can see the terrible violence that took place just recently in Manchester uh, and we had a chance backstage to 
send a message to the people of Manchester about how heartbroken we are by the loss of life and, and to grieve with the families. Uh, and it's a reminder that there is great danger and uh, terrorism and uh, people who would do great harm to others just because they're different. Uh, it's also a time of great opportunity. And my hope is, is that uh, now that I'm no longer president, uh, but I'm still hopefully have a little bit of influence, that I'm going to be in a position to help more and more young people to deal with some of these challenges, to encourage a new generation of leadership uh, so that we can marginalize those who would try to divide us and bring together more and more people who are trying to unite us around a common good. And I think this uh, event is a great place to start. Herr Präsident, Sie sind jetzt seit Mr. Etwa President, vier Monaten been nicht mehr im Amt. out of office Sie for four months vier now, Zeit gehabt, time during which you've had the opportunity to ponder, to make vacations, and also to think and reflect on your presidency, eight years in total, time you spent in service to the country. Now, I'm interested in what you thought upon reflecting on your previous eight years. Now, highlights, setbacks, times of setbacks that you now you feel sorry that you didn't really manage. Well, first of all, I think it's important to realize that it's only been four months, so I'm not sure I have the best historical perspective. Um, mostly I've been trying to catch up with my sleep. I've been trying to make sure that I'm spending more time with Michelle so that she forgives me for all the times that I've been away. Uh, I've been spending time with my daughters who are now getting old enough where they, uh, I'm not always the most interesting person. They're more interested in their friends, but they feel sorry for me sometimes and they're willing to do things with me and I try to take full advantage of that. Um, but I, I, I do, look, I, I, I'm very proud of the work that I did as president. Uh, and I think that uh, as Chancellor Merkel will tell you, when you get involved in public life, you have to recognize that uh, you never achieve 100% of what you want. Uh, that this is a human enterprise, and so inevitably it's flawed. And uh, what you try to do is to work with others who share your values and share your vision to try to make things better, understanding that you won't make things perfect. A good example, something I'm very proud of, is healthcare reform in the United States. Uh, now this is, as, as many of you know, uh, healthcare in the United States, we are unique among advanced countries that we don't have universal healthcare that oftentimes there are people who are sick who cannot get care or they have to go to an emergency room to get care. My hope was that I was able to get 100% of people health care while I was president. We didn't quite achieve that, but we were able to get 20 million people health care who didn't have it before. And certainly I have some regrets that we weren't able to get everyone health care, and obviously some of the progress that we made was, is now imperiled because there's still a significant debate taking place in the United States. But the point, though, is, is that for those 20 million people, their lives have been better. And we've set a standard of what's possible that people can then build on. I often say that in politics, uh, or at least what I used to say about the presidency, is, is I saw myself as a relay runner. I would take the baton and I would run my leg of the race. And then I pass on the baton to someone else. And again, that's part of the reason why I'm so interested in talking to young people here today, because each generation tries to make progress knowing that what we do is not gonna be perfect, that it's not gonna be 
solve every problem and that we're going to have to then pass the baton to somebody behind us but hopefully we've run our leg of the race effectively and the world's gotten a little bit better and certainly that's been true in germany that's been true in europe when you think about just what's happened in my lifetime despite all the tragedies that we see every day the world has never been wealthier it has never been uh, more healthy it's never been better educated young people today uh, have access to information and opportunities that would be unimaginable when I was born or Angela was born. And if we can sustain that progress, then uh, I feel very optimistic about our futures, but it's ultimately going to depend on the young people here uh, today. And my job now is to help them take it the next step. Uh, Sie haben jetzt Sie haben jetzt gesprochen über ein sehr wichtiges innenpolitisches Thema. Was fällt Ihnen ein, wenn Sie sich in Ihre Rolle in der internationalen Politik in der Welt in den Regrets? Was bedauern Sie? Und wo haben Sie das Gefühl gehabt, and ja, where do you feel, heute weiß ich, warum well, ich das now, alles today, I know why tue I've und warum been doing what es gut I've ist, doing, dass ich diesen Weg gegangen so bin und I've jetzt als Präsident das tun kann, was ich tue. Way, and that now as a president I can do what I want. Well, I, the Chancellor and I were talking uh, briefly before we came out. I think the international order is at a crossroads. Uh, it's an important time in the international community. Uh, if you think about what occurred, I was born in 1961, which I know that makes me seem very old to many of you. Um, but in history, that's actually not a very long time. And when I was born, uh, Berlin was divided. The Iron Curtain was up. Apartheid still reigned in South Africa. Uh, dictatorships were the norm in large portions of the world. We had just emerged out of a devastating world war, a Korean war. We were about to enter into a Vietnam war, the United States was. Uh, countries were still emerging from colonialism. And because I think of a set of ideals and principles, rule of law, the dignity of individuals, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, uh, a, a, a liberal market-based economy, be, because of these uh, principles that in fits and starts, Europe and the United States and other countries joined together to try to promote and spread, we saw incredible progress. And here in Europe, there has never been greater prosperity and greater peace than over the last three, four decades. That's an amazing achievement. And I think sometimes young people take it for granted. But I think that what we now have to recognize is that because of globalization and because of technology uh, and the disruptions that have occurred, the inequality that exists between nations and within countries, uh, because of the fact that the internet brings us all closer together but we're still from different cultures and sometimes feel disoriented by the world shrinking because of things like the refugee crisis, that this order that has been created has to be changed, it has to be updated, it has to be uh, continually renewed because there's a, a, a competing narrative of fear and xenophobia and nationalism and intolerance and anti-democratic trends. And so when, you, when I think about my role when I was president, but also now as a, as a citizen, 
of the United States and uh, part of the world community. What I think is most important is, is that we rally around those values and ideals that are best, and we have to push back against those trends that would violate human rights or that would uh, suppress democracy or that would restrict individual freedoms of conscience and religion. And that is going to be a significant uh, battle that we have to fight, all of us have to be a part of. And it's not always easy because, for example, I look at something, uh, a place like Syria where despite our best efforts, and this is something Angela and I worked on a lot, you still have a, a, a vicious war taking place. You still have millions of people displaced, hundreds of thousands killed. And it, it is going to require, I think, uh, everything we can do to recognize that what happens on the other side of the world or in these other countries, whether it's in Africa or Asia or Latin America, that it has an impact on us and that we're going to have to be invested in trying to help those countries uh, achieve peace and prosperity. And as president, I did not always uh, had the tools that I wanted to affect those kinds of changes, but at least we tried. And part of the goal here is to, if you try long enough, eventually uh, what President Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature, uh, I think, can win up. Yeah. Jetzt möchte ich mich an die Bundeskanzlerin like wenden. Einige der Themen, die der Präsident angesprochen hat, werden wir nachher noch Mr. mal vertiefen. Ähm, ich möchte jetzt noch well, we mal äh, die Bundeskanzlerin now, fragen. Like Bundeskanzlerin, das Thema ist ja Demokratie, Merkel, unsere Veranstaltung heute. Und auch das, äh, die Frage, was Democracy können wir als Christen und Christen dazu what beitragen? Und es ist ja so, dass es eben democracy. schon angeklungen ist, dass äh, die Demokratie in vielerlicht bedroht ist. Democracy is äh, under threat. Wir haben bei vielen Menschen many areas, many äh, ein Gefühl, das sich entfernen von den Grundorientierungen und dem Engagement in der Demokratie. Social Manche Menschen haben das Gefühl, society, die, die wichtigsten Probleme werden nicht gelöst. Many people feel that pressing die matters are not being addressed properly and politicians seem powerless in face of these Flüchtlings problems. We've talked about Frage the refugee und, uh, issues geschafft, and that Europe has not managed as yet to find a common können Sie verstehen, wenn Menschen sich von der Demokratie abwenden, topic. weil Now, sie das Gefühl can you understand haben, why people sie might actually move away from politicians, why also because they feel they don't solve the problem? Glaube ich, dass well, es in der Tat so ist, all, dass natürlich, I do believe that eben Barack Obama auch gesagt it's true, hat, um, as Barack Obama just said, there can be very rarely a 100% satisfactory solution. But let's look at the refugee issue, for example. The first thing that one has to say is that hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people in Germany feel sympathy, feel empathy, have shown compassion, have shown the, red, have shown the readiness to accept and receive uh, refugees and look after them, uh, both as volunteers and also as those who are in a position. So that these months have shown we can do something. We can actually move matters forward, and I think we ought to be grateful for this. Und dann and natürlich kommen die nächsten Fragen. Then obviously other questions ja come to Leben. the fore, but that that's life. Barack Obama hat gesagt, er ist 1961 As Barack Obama geboren, uh, said, he was uh, born war in, in 61, the year wurde. in which the war was built. Uh, uh, I um, was born um, seven years geboren. earlier. When I Meine actually Eltern was enrolled in school, Tag the so war was built. My parents were so geändert. shocked because it turned our life upside down. All of a sudden, they no longer were able Berlin to visit the grandmother, to pay visits to the aunt. Uh, Berlin was a divided city. And again and again, uh, 
people were vigilant. They saw to it that those people who were in prison in Bautzen were not forgotten, that uh, their names were not forgotten. Um, actually, um, sums were paid to release them from prison. Um, for humanitarian purposes, achieve efforts were made so that people could visit each other. And from decades, uh, people probably made fun of you when you said, I am absolutely convinced that German unity will come about. And it did come about. So let us not think in months, let us think in years' time. Das hat mein Leben geprägt. That's what was so determinant in my life. I had already made plans. Um, once I'm retired, finally I will be able to go to the United States of America. And it happened earlier. So, what you have to tell yourself is, what I am convinced of, I am trying not to forget. I'm trying to work to make this happen every day, a little bit every day. And sometimes it may go more slowly than we think, but at least I have a very good feeling of doing something that is important, of making a difference. And the sum total of all of those initiatives, of everything that people do, of all of the bit, uh, bits and pieces made, brings us forward. Sometimes there will be setbacks, as there are in history, but all of that will bring us forward. Now, let me just talk about the migrant issue you touched on currently as Bishop. Many letters are written to me by people who are actively, with compassion, actively committed to solidarity, to making sure people are being integrated properly, to make sure they learn German and maybe find a job. That suits them. And they write to me, well, my protégé is about to be deported. And then they tell me, you know, when we talk about Afghanistan, that they already panic, they really are concerned that their protégé might be threatened. And their lives might be under threat in Afghanistan if they are to be deported. And they also tell me about people who have really settled in and, you know, some people tell me that their apprentices are now doing very well. And I don't understand why politicians can't find standardized measures and policies to make sure that everybody who wants to stay can stay. Any comment on this? Well, I think that indeed is one of the most complex and complicated issues that are out there because at the beginning we were, when very many came, we were not able to actually speed up the processes. Um, people came to the communities, came to the cities, uh, people came to the fore and had tried to help them, volunteers tried to help them. So there's a, the very great concern now, obviously, that those people who finally integrated into our society have to leave, they have to leave the country. There are people who, on a voluntary basis, go back to where they came from. That obviously is the easiest. Um, but we, there are also some to whom we have to say, you have to go back. And now I have to tell you that these, this is among those very, very difficult issues that you have to deal with when you're um, chancellor um, or president, as the case may be. Now, there are so many people who come from Afghanistan and try to seek refuge. Here. Only about half of them are granted asylum according to our legislation. And now, obviously, they ask those people ask us, well, if we have rule of law here, if we have underwent a procedure, um, then there was a legal proceeding in a court of law. And then, unfortunately, we have to tell you, you have no right to stay. Why? Are there made exceptions to that rule? That is what people ask us. And should we not help those who are in dire absolute need of our help? And we have hundreds of thousands of people out there as well. That is a dilemma, a dilemma that you have to um, deal with. And I can only deal with this in such a way that I say we have to come to a, a speedy decision as possible so those people who do not have um, granted um, asylum to stay, uh, granted the right to stay here, um, we will have to send them back as quickly as possible and not have them leave in the Before over. I give the floor to Christina, I will one follow-up question. I know, I know, it is not an answer uh, 
that will endear me to many people, but we have to be very careful. We have to help those who really need our help, and there are more than enough on this world. Now, it's a follow-up question to those who have been here for quite some time.